guys, that's your commander today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video. I'm glad to have you with me hanging out for a little bit, talking some Raid Shadow Legends today. Today, we're going to go ahead and do kind of a follow-up video. I don't know, well, maybe like two, three weeks ago, a month ago. I lose track of time here. But we did a kind of a... I don't know, an evaluation, if you will, of all the legendary champions that Mr. Hell Hades, the critically acclaimed HellHades.com, ranked with a perfect score. So today, I want to do the same thing. Again, you guys really enjoyed kind of comparing my opinions with somebody else's out there published on the internet. Uh, again, I want to give a massive shout out to Hell Hades' uh, website. They do a tremendous job there. They have all these champions uh, ranked. They have their guides, their, their masteries, their artifacts, blessings, everything you want to know about any of these champions and all the related news and stuff as well so make sure you bookmark that website uh, but today I want to go over the 11 champions that he ranks four and a half or higher aka like a 90 if you extrapolate the scores or an A his A ranked epics in the game there's only 11 of them so what I want to do is I want to go through them and I want to tell you guys ahead of time there's only two that I disagree with. So if we're making my own personal top 11 epic champions, there's only two that I would swap out here. Now I could pick probably 12, 13, 20. Okay, bud, let's take about 20% offer over there, eh? Other epic champions you can make a case for to be on this list. But when, when push comes to shove and you have to remove champions to add your own to the list, that's when it gets really tough. Anyway, guys, the only absolute 100 out of 100 A++ champion that he ranks uh, out of all the epics in the game is, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how I build these champions too as we talk about every one, just to give you guys maybe some added value in today's video. Uh, it's just cheap labor. Come on, man. The perfect champion, the perfect epic champion is Geomancer, and I actually agree. I think he's the best epic in the game. Y you know, every time they add a new boss to the game, Geomancer is like a stud against them, right? He's great against Hydra, great against uh, Sand Devil, great against Iron Twins. Uh, Geo just is, is Geo, right? He's the best, and I hope they never, ever, ever, ever touch him. Please, Plarian, please. You already nerfed our blessings. Don't touch our Geomancer, dude. Man. I'm a little on edge today, <laughs> sorry guys. Geo because of his quicksand grasp ability. Listen, his A2 is really nice as well. He steals all buffs from targets under HP burn, reduces the cooldown uh, if it's killed, if, if the target is killed by the skill. But I like to, in most situations, turn the A2 off and put him in reflex gear so I can get more A3s, more HP burns the last three turns on a three turn cooldown and activate that stone guard. So I like him in a reflex set personally. Uh, just an incredible champion and I totally agree that he is the the best of the best. All right, so the following 10 are going to be 90 or 4.5 or higher scores, okay? So uh, let's just start out with another guy that I absolutely agree on. I'm not going to tell you who I disagree with until the end or until I go through these champions really quickly, and then we'll take a look at the actual website and talk about kind of like who's in that next tier that I would put up a tier. Dark Hale is definitely, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tip my hand anymore. <laughs> Dark Hale is a boss, right? He's a beast champion. He's got the triple hitter, the instant activation, poison, HP burn, one of each and or on his A2. He's an AOE decrease attack. Each critical hit also has a hundred percent chance to increase the duration of all debuffs on the target target by one turn this guy's a monster he has poisons times three and poison sensitivity whether you're talking about you know regular clan boss whether you're talking about most specifically instant activation teams hammering away with his a1 against bosses fire knight ice golem dragon's lair you name it dark hail is amazing very very good champion uh really Big fan, big fan of Dark Kale. Next up is gonna be Deke. Uh, of course, I feel like most people have Deke at the top of their list or close to. He's a spirit affinity debuffer who has that extra turn ability along with some control. I run uh, Dark Kale. What do I run Dark Kale in? Uh, don't look at me. I think probably just perception gear. Pretty simple, pretty fast with perception. Nothing too crazy. With Deke, I think I run him basically the same. Perception gear. Perceptions, for my money, the best artifact set really bar none in the game, especially PvE content, even can be used in PvP too. Uh, so yeah, I run Deke in the same thing, uh, but the extra turn with the turn meter increase, it basically gets us to allow the uh, decreased defense to stay up pretty much all the time on that A2 because of that extra turn proc on the A3, not to mention the control that he brings to the table with the leech and the speed on the aura. Next up is going to be Demitha. Demitha was added, what, a year or two ago now? Man, time flies by when these champions, I still think of Demitha as semi-new, but it's probably been like two years she's been in the game. Uh, she's notable, not just for her 
her amazing A2 ability, which is notable for her A3, but her A2 should not be slept on. It's a great heal, increase the duration of all buffs, decrease the duration of all debuffs, all in one ability. Very, very good. Uh, but then she has, of course, the block damage for one turn on a three-turn cooldown, right? So really, really nice for unkillable block damage teams. Uh, she was definitely a massive game changer when she came out, which was before Helicath. Uh, so she's used maybe a little bit less now, but still an incredible, incredible champion. All right, next up is going to be champion that we got to give a lot more love to here i use him so much on my free to play and it's duck the pierced this guy is a really really good champion he has a decreased accuracy on his a1 each hit has a chance of landing that so 50 percent on each hit not too bad i always keep an eye out for these each hit abilities right by the way i keep forgetting demitha i run what do i even run her in anymore i don't know Speed, just speed gear to be speed tuned, right? That's all I care about. Dr. Pierce, I run in perception. You guys got it. Uh, a lot of accuracy on this champion. He puts out a decent amount of damage. The nice thing about him is he's defense based too. So unlike like Stagnite, he's a little bit easier to keep alive with the defense. However, I will say he's about five, 6,000 HP short of Stagnite as well. And he's a lot slower, 10 speed slower than Stagnite. I say all that because he has a very similar ability here on an AOE decreased attack and decreased defense on the same ability. And then he has a provoke on two enemies uh, on his A3, which is a four turn cooldown. It can come in handy, but it's not a game changer. The nice thing is he does have uh, an unkillable on himself for one turn as well. He also has defense in faction crypts by 31%. So that is Duck the Pierced. Next up is going to be Godseeker Aniri. So if I was gonna put any, I'm tipping my hand again here. If I was gonna put any champion in the same category as Geomancer, it would probably be Godseeker, maybe a couple others too, but Godseeker is so incredibly good. Uh, she is, her and GR, they're really the closest things to a legendary in all epics in the game, and uh, for my money, uh, we have an AoE with a great heal here, increase the duration of buffs, de increase the duration of, uh, excuse me, decrease the duration of buffs on enemies, <laughs> while also increasing our duration of buffs. She got that great revival with the reset, the cooldowns, that's so nasty. Speaking of Geo, you put her on the same team as like a Geomancer, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible stuff there. I run her, I think, in regen and immortal to keep her alive, because I use her on a duo team for sand devil uh basically just need a lot of speed out of this champion uh to make sure she can keep up with the heals and the uh guardian angel right it's amazing increase the value of heals all hours received but what's more important is that preemptive kind of revival it's it's putting a revive on death on an ally before they die so so powerful what an incredible champion a nasty a2 great revive and a really really good uh passive next up is going to be you know what i've noticed here too we get man eater i noticed not many new champions here not many new champions on the list uh siphon fully to please targets turn meter decrease attack on everybody provided it's critical on the a1 and then the ancient blood with the unkillable and block debuffs for two turns on a five turn cooldown the king of unkillable teams still in this game it's man eater but don't get me wrong this dude is a beast even outside of just unkillable teams I actually pulled him in the uh, maxing random champions that i pulled from random shards video that i did last week and he just proved how incredible he is right next up is going to be no shocker here it's going to be seer it's going to be seer i will say though the one of mine that i would put in the category put in the top 11 would actually be a new champion actually i have two that i would put in and i'll talk to you about it in, in, a, minute, in a minute excuse me what am I now? seer <laughs> so we have karma burn enough said enough said everything's dead uh seer is just incredible with the karma burn ability she's a hard hitting a1 on knockout as well but she is the queen of of speed farming right uh we mentioned him earlier guys but it's none other than mr stagnite so good old stagnite i actually prefer stagnite to duck the pierced uh he's not defense base but he does have the decreased speed on the A1. You love to have that added to the kit. He still has the decreased attack, decreased defense. You want to make sure you grab a sniper so you can bring this up from a 95 to 100% land rate uh, on that mastery. Very, very important tier 5 on the support tree uh, for Stagnite. He also has that increased accuracy every time an ally gets a debuff resisted, which is really nice to have. It's, it's not a game changer by any stretch of the imagination, but again, we mentioned his speed. He's very, very fast, a really, really strong and robust debuffer. Again, pretty tanky with 21k on 
the HP. Of course, of course, we have Ugo on the list. You guys know how much I love Ugo. She's got the little mini cleanse there, removing a random debuff along with heal reduction. She's got a great heal there based on her max HP, so you can really stack up that HP, get a nice, nice beefy heal there. And then we have that kind of uh, breaking case of an emergency revive, we like to call it here on the channel, and AoE decreased defense and block buffs, really dependable block buffs, really, really good for Hydra Clan boss specifically, because we're going to boost that all the way up to a uh, b -b -b what, 50 plus a 70, 100% chance. There we go. We're going to boost up to 100% chance to land that block buffs on everybody, along with the block defense. She also has a leech on the A1. Again, really, really good champion. All these champions are so incredible. Uh, but the last one that Hell Hades has, guys, the last one is going to be none other than Vogoth, and it definitely be belongs there. Uh, one of the best healers in the game, and it comes off as passive, so it's not predicated on him taking a turn. It's predicated on him taking a hit, which is really, really nice. I happen to run Vogoth in a curing set, uh, but I probably would run him on bolster if I used him a little bit more often, and I would probably use him on an arena team in bolster and really stack up his HP. Uh, so that's how I would run him, but curing works really well too, because that bonus his heal really does add up when you're healing as much as this champion. All right, so those are the top 11, guys. Let's take a look again here. We have Geo, Dark Kale, Deke, Demitha, Duck, Godseeker, Maneater, Seer, Stagnite, Ugo, Vogoth. All right, so if we look at like one step down, let me move myself over here. If we look one step down here, guys, we have Allure, really good. We have a Kentum. A Kentum. A kept a chem tum. A chem tum. A chem tum. We have Aox, Archmage Helmet, very good. Doom Priest, very good. Farker and the Fat, Fenix. Uh, Fodbor, Grush. Fodbor the Bard, very, very high score for him. I don't know if I agree with that, but not a bad champion. We have Grush, we have Haikatoon, we have Hatasu, Husk, Inquisitor, Madame Ceres, Magnar, Mausoleum Mage, Melga, Miscreated, Mordecai, Myaklis, please. <laughs> Gee, can, I sp can I speak today, guys? Mycelic Priest Orn, Myaklic? <laughs> Aboro, Silar, Rector Drath, Ryan the Contra, Royal Guard, Ruella, Roomkeeper, Daz Dirk. We have a Skrank, we have Skullcrown, Tayrell, Thylesia, Taragi, Umbral, Yurgrim, Venomage, Ursula, and White Dryad, Naya. All right, so here's the deal. I have one of these champions on my top. Let me, who would I take out here? And I have to ask you guys this. Who would you take out? It's tough. I would take out Demitha. Only because, again, they added a champion who's probably more widely used in Helicath over her, after her, right? So I still think she's an incredible champion, but I'd probably take her out. And then I take out uh, Duck the Pierced, right? Again, a little bit too slow for me to put, like, the, the you know, above some of the other champions that we, we, we haven't even spoke about yet. And then I'm actually itching to get three now that I read them all out. I'm actually itching to get three on the list. Who guys would you take out if you had to take somebody out? After that, for me... It's really difficult to take anybody off this list. Uh, but I will tell you the champions that I would personally add. I just did a guide on her, and White Dryad Naya, I'm putting on the freaking list. So her A3, her A1's great, it's an AoE decrease speed, right? And then her A3 is fantastic, ally protect and a strength and weak version, but it's on a three turn cooldown, okay? She also has whenever the champion is healed, heals all ally except this champion at 20% of that heal. It's a nice kind of bonus heal that she has built into her passive. But the coolest thing, honestly, about her kit to me is this ability is nasty. It's really nasty. Throughout the duration of a longer battle or a shorter battle, it doesn't really matter. You're just going to be targeting somebody, especially if someone doesn't need a massive heal. It's a big heal, right? It's a cleanse. Heals them by 40% of their max HP, so it's a great cleanse, great heal, single target. But then decrease the cooldown of all the target skills by two turns. That's nasty, man. That is so good. It's such an underrated part of her kit to me, uh, or properly rated if you, you know, if you have her and you recognize how good that is. But think about it, you know, she's on the same team with like a Royal Guard or a Husk or a Geomancer or a Ninja. I can just keep going here. A bunch of champions that have one really good ability, you can just redu keep reducing their ability. Use her in the arena with like a Warlord and you keep reducing his Orcish Rituals and then they never get to go. It's really nasty, this Righteous Revival A2 ability. So I'm putting her on my list 100%. The other champion, guys, I've been talking about this dude for so long. I don't know. I don't know why nobody gives him the love he deserves. He wasn't even on the second list, right? And it's Tagore. I'm such a big fan of this dude. He's a new champion. 
He's really good, right? There's never been like a 10 times for him that I know of or a guaranteed event. There was not much hubbub around this champion being added to the game. So maybe just no one's talking about him right now, but it's a two time hitter with increased defense for uh, for two turns in the alley, the lowest current HP, the magic stick. I got the magic stick. Okay, sorry. Not bad, not bad A1, right? On the A2, uh, charge, can't. Can't? Can't. Uh, attacks all enemies, uh, places an increased speed on all allies for two turns, and then heals all allies by 15% of this champion's max HP. That's really solid. So we get a nice little heal there, get the AoE attack, and then we have the increased speed on everybody on a three turn cooldown. Okay. And then check this out Rise and Fight. This is on a five turn cooldown, revives everybody 30% HP. Then places a shield buff on all allies for two turns, equal to 20% of this champion's max HP. So again, another reason on the A2 heal and on the A3 shield, 30% revival is not a very good revive. However, it is an AoE revival on an epic champion on a five turn cooldown. There's not that many solid AoE revivers out of every epic in the game, right? So we get everybody and the shield and uh, that shield is going to matter a lot. So again, stacking a lot of HP is going to be important on this champion. But then Aid the Feeble, his passive. You guys know how much I love damage and mitigation on passives. This is a really powerful passive, guys. Decrease the damage received by allies by 50% or less by 10%. So it's a straight up damage mitigator for allies with less than 50% HP, which is when they need the damage mitigation the most. You don't find these types of damage mitigators on pa on passives on epic champions. You just don't find them. You have one here. So Tagore is a, a reviver, a healer, increased speed, increased defense on the low alloy with lowest HP, and then the damage mitigation on the passive and HP in all battles by 25% on the aura. I'm just a massive, massive fan. And he's fast for reviver, 105 base speed. Uh, I'm a really, really big fan of him, and I would put him in. So White Dryad, Naya, and Tagore, I would put in that category. The other champion that I guess I'll just give an honorable mention, because I don't know who I would take out for him, but Mausoleum Mage. Listen, this guy's an old champion. He's not sexy. No one gets excited about Mausoleum Mage anymore, but he's still so unbelievably good. Decreased speed on the A1. Increased crit rate, increased defense, block debuffs on a three-turn cooldown on the A2. On the A3, a full cleanse, and then heals by 10% of this champion's max HP. Heals more depending on how many buffs were removed from the ally. Fills turn meter if two or more debuffs removed from that ally. So we have potentially a turn meter fill, a nice heal, and a cleanse, along with increased defense, increased crit rate block debuffs, and decreased speed. Man, I don't know who I would take out from all that's That's where it gets to be an issue here. So I'm not sure who I like him better than. He's di a lot different than a lot of these champions. Not many support champions on this top list. But I had to give some love to him because I don't know who it would be. But if I had to make my top 11, I'd try to sneak in Mausoleum Mage. Who else, guys? Who else would you put in there? I guess the other two champions that, again, I think probably deserve to be there is Allure. She's kind of one-dimensional with this A1, but that's one dimension that nobody else has, right? It's like one of the best control uh, abilities inside the entire game. And then uh, he had them uh, on the next rung down, but Archmage Helmet is really, really good with crazy base stats and incredible stun. Decent amount of damage, increased speed, crit rate, and crit damage in one ability. Increased crit damage is such an underrated buff. I'll tell you guys that. Uh, if we have, I mean, this is obvious, but <laughs> if we have 300 crit damage on our nuker, we're rocking almost 400 crit damage with this buff on our nuker. That's big extra damage. Not just Archmage Helmet, but don't sleep on increased crit damage. Seriously. All right, guys, especially like on your arena nuker or on your max enemy max HP champion. Uh, and then, you know, Husk and Royal Guard, I think that you can make an a strong argument just because of how good their takedown uh, and despair abilities are. I think you can make an argument they probably belong uh, maybe higher too. But again, if you're only going with 11 spots here, which is the rules that we're following, I would add White Dryad and Tagore. Guys, there it is. Make sure you give Hell Hades some love. Uh, if you don't know the website, well, now you do. Go ahead and click on it. Bookmark it's in the description below. And uh, we'll try to do one of those big, long, reviewing every epic uh, champions inside the entire game video sometimes hopefully this month i will reach out to hades guys in the meantime thank you for watching till the end of the video i appreciate you guys and as always take care guys